Reddit, what's your co-worker meltdown story? Pizza Hut manager asked one of the drivers to put on his uniform shirt. Driver flipped out and tried to set his shirt on fire in the lobby while screaming about oppression. Then he took off for some reason and drove to the airport where he jumped the fence leading to the tarmac. Got roughly arrested by the airport cops. We never saw him again. Turned out he had drank a bunch of Robitussin. Ain't no fussin with the tussin. A manager that wasn't really my manager. When his bosses were gone, he would take one 2 hour lunches. On the clock, we were allowed a 30 minute lunch off the clock. He would sit in the management office and eat a little, read the paper. Just basically not working while the store got busy. It was fairly well known by the lower workers he did this. We just didn't say anything. One day a manager of equal power from a different department confronted him about it while he had been on lunch for over an hour. He picked up his sandwich and threw it at her yelling about why doesn't he get to take his lunch in peace like everyone else. Basically just went on this rant of irrelevant stuff. Then just stopped and went back to reading the paper. He was fired by the end of the day. Having had two co-workers this year promoted, despite taking up to an extra two, one stroke two of lunch every day with no repercussions, your story was very cathartic for me. Waiting tables. He goes in the bathroom and doesn't come out for an hour. I took all of the tables for the section while he was gone. When he comes out very clearly on some type of drugs, he is angry I stole tips from him by not waiting for him to get back before I seated people. He cusses as he walks out. Came back a week later demanding the tips from the tables that he should have waited on. Sounds like drugs to me. It was probably H and he nodded out and didn't even know it. I was working in a fast food kitchen and we hired this shifty looking guy in his 50s named Chicago. His first day he started complaining because we kept him on only one task because he was new and still slow. Before we know it he was yelling, y'all just don't want me to shine, y'all just scared. Then, he just walked out muttering that this place was too dirty to work in, we had just opened so the place was in no way dirty. Never, ever frick with a guy named after a city, they should teach this to kids in grade school. Woman kept taking off and coming in late. She was about 50. Eventually the boss called her in and asked what is going on. The woman just loses it saying it's none of their business. Boss tells her that they will have to let her go if she misses one more day or is late again this year as she missed. 15 days in scheduled, used her sick time, and vacation days and was late every day by up to an hour and it was only April, and they will be docking her for those hours she wasn't here or left early. Woman starts screaming you don't have that right you can't take my money frick you just frick you. Eventually she pulled the mat on top of the desk of sending papers and the computer to the floor. Boss booked it and locked her in the room where she continued to kick holes in the drywall and break everything in sight. Security comes. They call the police. Police come go in and she started throwing stuff at them screaming that's my god dang freaking money we were escorted off the floor and I'm guessing they taste her or something because she was taken out handcuffed to a wheelchair. Sounds like an extreme JG Wentworth commercial. I was doing carpentry work in the ghetto with another carpenter, old Jim. Some local kids were there cracking wise, being smart mouthed and just generally hanging around, annoying the heck out of both of us. Old Jim yelled at them a few times, they kept it up. Old Jim got madder, they thought that was even more fun and started walking right up to old Jim and smart mouthing him right to his face. Old Jim listened to maybe two of them before he'd heard enough. He grabbed the last kid lifted him up against a wall we were building, grabbed his nail gun and nailed through the shoulders of the kid's jacket so the kid was literally hung on the wall, dangling from his jacket. Old Jim got one inch from his face and just screamed at the kid for a few minutes, just absolutely red face screaming at him. The kid's eyes were huge, he suddenly wasn't the little smarty pants he had been a minute earlier. He was scared to death, hanging from a wall with a screaming madman rights in his face. Old Jim had a meltdown. He kept it up for a full two minutes, just screaming an inch away from the kid's face. The kid was near tears. Finally old Jim had said his piece. He got a pry bar, pull out the nails and the kid came down off the wall. That kid's feet hit the ground and he was gone, running for everything he was worth. It seemed like he just sort of instantly vaporized the instant he hit the ground. An hour later the cops show up. 
boys. Sorry, but you can't nail kids to a wall. Old Jim had to pay for the kid's jacket. I'm glad it was resolved with a jacket fee. I used to work at a bookstore with two guys named Sean and Warren. Sean was a real abrasive butthole, loved insulting people and getting under their skin, and as such a lot of people hated Sean, but nobody hated him more than Warren. Warren had some anger management issues and with the way Sean kept pushing his buttons it was only a matter of time before Warren snapped. We all knew there was going to be a showdown between them at some point. We did not expect it to happen behind the cash wrap two days before Christmas in front of about a hundred customers. I was on the other side of the store when it happened and by the time I rushed over the fight had already been broken up. I don't know what Sean said to Warren but Warren had finally snapped and punched Sean and it turned into an all out brawl between the two. Since Warren had thrown the first punch we told him to go home and Sean stayed at the cash wrap. I started helping a customer find a book in our computer system when there was another commotion next to me. Warren had taken the combination lock off his locker from in back and was now bashing Sean over the head with it. I had to grab Warren, pull him off and calm him down and he finally left. I then just went straight back to helping the customer find the book she wanted and Sean went in back to calm himself down. Sean wound up quitting because he was afraid he'd get fired. I don't know if he would have, and Warren was fired. Last I'd heard of Warren he was on trial for attempted murder after he stabbed an ex-girlfriend's then current boyfriend in the throat with a pen. I work at a company with commissioned salesmen. Due to some market changes, commissions got slashed by a bunch of companies we represent. One of them, a major company for us, decided to announce this via email on a Friday evening, after business hours. A 30 year veteran salesman was out at the bar, saw it, and drowned his sorrows for a few hours. Then, he decided to let the sender know how he really feels about the decision. As you might expect, he replied all, and sent his profanity filled, drunkenly composed rant to every competitor, salesman, and company official of course, tied to our company's email, even has our business card as his email signature. Then, he sent a follow up, letting us know just how little he cares. Monday morning, we called him in, and he just shook his head and let us know he's well aware of why we're here, what he did, and he'll pack his stuff. I feel bad for the poor guy. When I was in high school, I was a busser at a kind of fancy steak place. Think Ruth's Chris but just a tad more casual. Anyway, this one kid who bussed with me was moving out of state and decided to not give a two weeks notice. The last day he was able to come and before he moved, he walked up to like two or three tables and just ripped the nastiest sounding farts I had ever heard. I accidentally walked in the back when the manger was firing him. Manager says why would you do that instead of just telling me you quit my buddy responds I freaking hate this place. He then farted again and walked out. It's not so much a meltdown, but it's still pretty amusing. I've always envied those who can fart at will without crapping themselves. When I first started working retail, it was for this family owned grocery store. It was fairly decent sized and had a ton of loyal customers. I had been working there for 5 months. I was 16 years old and it was my first job. We had an older lady named Michelle who worked there since it opened like 20 years ago. I had no keys to the register and there were certain things I could and couldn't do, like refunds. Anyways, Michelle never ran the register, she kept the store stock because I was better at being the face of the store when people entered and was better at being on the register. I just didn't have keys, so I had to call her up to help. Michelle didn't like that, even though it was one of the reasons she kept her job after customers kept complaining that she was bitchy to them. Well, I come in for my shift and right off the bat, I get hit with like, 3 returns, someone needing to break $100 bill, I wasn't allowed to do that, and finally, I ran out of 1s, 5s, and 10s, so I needed Michelle to come up and help me, Michelle stormed around the counter threw open the safe where we kept more money, 1s, 5s, 10s, etc, and just threw the tray of money on the counter, where it slid across the counter and landed on the ground, scattering money everywhere for customers to pick up, luckily, the customers were decent people and handed me all the money in the broken till, I got myself set up and, despite being young I decided to chastise Michelle because, frick that childish behavior, all I got out was, 
come on Michelle before she pulled the lanyard with the keys around her neck off and chucking them at me with a resounding frick you. And that was how I got promoted to key holder. That made me laugh way too loud for this quiet office. Life is about the little victories, you the Zanester. Temp screamed at boss, not even sure why. Argument ended with her throwing her work badge at him and leaving, saying she let him know tomorrow if she still wanted to work there. Did I mention she was a temp? Security had her banned from the building and desk cleared out within the hour. Had a guy I supervised who apparently didn't understand I was his supervisor. We had a huge amount of space for overstock in the back room, plus about 1600 SQFT storage room in the basement. I kept 4 shelves, not 4 units, just 4 shelves each about 3 feet long, that I needed to hold my work in progress. I had a sign on each shelf indicating it was reserved. I went away for a week off, came back to find he had ripped off my signs and taken all my stuff off and piled it on my workbench. I put everything back the way it was, when he came and told him that those shelves were reserved. I was annoyed but kept my cool cause he was new. He lost it, screaming at me, cursing me, I mean actually cursing me, not swearing at me, although he did that too. Buggers in the front of the store didn't come to help they just closed the door. What it came down to was he was too lazy to push a cart with the last bit of overstock down to the storage room, so he decided I didn't need that little bit of space and it belonged to him. I finally told him look, I'm your supervisor, I'm telling you I need those shelves, that's it, keep them clear. You're not my supervisor. You're not man enough. Huh. Okay. Well I am your supervisor. This is the way it is. If it bothers you that much, well, you can always leave. Thinking this is over a couple of shelves. He's acting like I stole his car and ran over his dog after sleeping with his wife. He stomped out, came back in 30 minutes later with his resignation. He was in the process of being fired anyways. My manager was away that day so I documented it all and sent it to him and HR. Along with all the other details. I wasn't the first person he'd freaked on but this was the worst. Found out after he'd spent that time stripping a bunch of solid copper heat sinks in the storage room. Took the copper and left the fans and stuff behind. A month later he called my manager for a reference. Who gave him a good one. I looked at him, seriously that's how we got stuck with him. Someone at his old place gave a good reference. Now we've saddled him on someone else. Bah. I did laugh though. He thought he was sticking it to me but it took us about a day to find someone else to fill his job. Well. I had a meltdown at work once. I worked at a very small dog boarding and grooming shop in college. My boss hand wrote our schedule and posted it on the wall each week so I'd take a picture of it with my phone so I'd have it with me. One time she decided after she had posted the schedule and I had taken my picture that she wanted me to come in half an hour later that Thursday to do grooming rather than my usual boarding work. She changed it on the schedule but never mentioned it to me. So I came in at the time on the schedule that was in my phone. The receptionist says to me when I come in that I'm scheduled for grooming, not boarding. So I say okay and wait for the first grooming dogs to show up so I can start brushing them and trimming their nails. Well, when the boss arrives 15 minutes later and sees me already there brushing a dog before my shift starts she flips out. Tells me to put the dog in a kennel and then walks me around to all the boarding rooms saying things like well why didn't you clean this? And this she accused me of trying to steal money from her by coming in early and forced me to change my clock in time to the time on the schedule. Mind you an extra half hour is only $4. I point out that she never told me she changed the schedule so I came in according to the schedule in my phone but she just yells at me some more. Now this happened at the end of the semester when projects were due and finals were coming up so I was already stressed out. Plus this wasn't the first time she treated me like crap so I had what I can only describe as an anxiety attack mental breakdown type thing. I burst into tears. My legs were shaking so bad I could hardly stand. And I kept yelling right back at her trying to defend myself. She looked rather shocked and backed off a bit. I wanted to quit so bad but I needed the money for rent and food so as soon as I calmed down I went back to working my shift. I did quit later. Though, after I had found another job and the majority of the rest of the staff had quit due being sick of the boss's crap, she verbally abused everyone there. Definitely sounds like a panic anxiety attack to me. What in butthole. Sorry you had to deal with that. Where I used to work, 
a boss had an issue with one of the guys in the warehouse. It all seemed fine, but then in the course of less than a day they found out. He was stealing merchandise out of the warehouse. To ensure he wouldn't get caught, he would take it to another co-worker's house. He was having an affair with that co-worker. They'd had sex in the warehouse on multiple occasions. Literally nobody had any idea any of this was happening. Then suddenly this whole story came out at once. Funnily enough he got fired, but his accomplice kept her job. She somehow kept working there for another 6 months or so even with everyone judging the heck out of her. After the third time one of our perpetually aloof lab techs didn't hook up the slurry waste discharge to the catch bucket, causing it to overflow onto the floor. One of our other techs literally put his head through the wall in frustration. It was hilarious. I bet the same guy cleaned out the polisher and didn't put the tube into a bucket and just overflowed the polish tank. Suckers did that all the time. I got so many stories from that heck hole. My old lab manager punched a hole in the wall next to the GM's head during a heated argument. No one got fired or disciplined. That was the good old days. I used to work in a very cleek wire lab. 8 women in the same room for 40 hours a week with a boss who encouraged gossip. The ages ranged from late 50s to 2 months out of college 21. The 21 year old had worked there while a student and promoted up to full time but never shared the student worker mentality. One of the middle aged women got fed up with the immaturity and decided to lay down the law that we are co-workers, not friends. Stop interrogating me about my personal life. Young chick could not handle the idea that older co-worker did not want to be friends. Just respectful colleagues and had a sobbing meltdown. This whole drama fest was mediated by the boss and it made for a super awkward time to come back from lunch. <laughs> Worked at a wholesale office supply company that had a warehouse op. A guy was hired to pick orders and showed up to start work. Some weirdness ensued and about the 3D day, someone else comes to report that new guy is hurting himself. He had dropped a box of razor blades, which burst open, and was picking them with his bare hands, cutting his fingers up. Manager lets him go, says it isn't working out. New guy shows up next day for work with his lunch packed and ready to go. Manager sends him home. New guy's mom comes in to plead his case. Still fired. Many months forward we hear on the news that new guy is arrested for standing in the door of his rather upscale home or main saint nude and calling out to the catholic school girls. While he is in the psych ward, our company gets a visit from the secret service asking about new guy. Turns out he had been threatening president, Ronald Reagan. I still feel sad when I think about how optimistic he must have felt when he showed up with his lunch ready to have another chance. New guy shows up next day for work with his lunch packed and ready to go. Ugh. This got to me. The guy had been here for about a year or so at the time. Everyone had their suspicions as to his drug use. Then one day he proved it. He came in tweaking his butt off. He was up then down, happy and sad to the absolute extremes. He thought there was bugs in the keyboard so he was shaking it out and yelling at it while trying to get all of our's attention. He still works here. Well that sure was an unexpected ending. Witnessed a co-worker get fired for showing up late. He was really in a bad mood that day. He started yelling at the manager and then kicking the back door. He broke through the door which was unlocked at the time. Then gets to his car, makes a call then races his engine and pops it into drive. He manages to run over most of the small shrubbery in front of his parking space and get his bumper hung up on a rock. Then throws his into reverse and sequels the tires until he gets free of the rock. Then starts randomly running over all the landscaping in the entire lot. At this point most of the co-workers are near the big window in front watching this. One is getting it on his iPhone. He finally peels out into the street nearly missing a truck. I don't know if this counts as a meltdown, but at my previous company, our IT guy used to get naked in the server room. No idea why, he just did. One day, one of the ladies in HR with computer problems walks in there without knocking, and finds him naked with a jar of peanut butter. Not sure what he was doing with that, IT guy gets dressed, and goes to HR and quits and storms out about an hour later, and for some reason, when he left. The guy left the jar of peanut butter in the server room. 
Having worked in telco tech support for a few years at the front line and second levels, many moons ago, I saw a few of these. I wish to preface that none of these people were fired for this although many of them quit on their own accord shortly afterwards. 1. Coworker was getting exceptionally frustrated at a customer who didn't quite understand the concept of click the OK button. After several attempts at this he yelled in a fit of anger click the freaking OK button. As I didn't reach the mute button in time the customer I was on the phone with started laughing and mentioned how it sounded like someone was having a bad day. The mute button was off on your friend in coworker meltdown stories and phone tech support. 2. Shortly after I became a second level agent, a co-worker of mine who was particularly high strung would go from 0, 0,100 pretty quickly. Without any warning he ended up ripping his headset off his head and yelling fuck as loudly as his lungs and larynx would allow him. The manager who was on duty at the time was a lovely woman emerged from her office just to see this employee smash his headset to pieces. He got the rest of the day off. 3. We had a gentleman working who was doing the graveyard shift. Back at the time this story happened it was done solo. He had a particularly bad phone call where a customer wasn't able to rent an adult film and was getting upset about it using language he probably wouldn't have used in a face to face encounter. The employee in question hung up the phone, left of the office, having made the quick decision to end his employment, threw his head in dumpster and went home to sleep. He later remarked that it was the best sleep he ever had. I was a mute button ninja at my old job. I swear those phones could pick up profanity from halfway across the office. I work at a vet hospital and we had to take x-rays of a dog's tummy because it was having diarrhea and throwing up so it had to be on its back. On its, It was a decent sized dog. A breed of pit bull so it was definitely a two person job. I grabbed the front legs and my co-worker grabbed the back legs and we tried to keep the animal straight and on its back. The dog then violently projectile crap on my co-worker, covering her in a 6 inch wide line from her chest to her hairline. She absolutely freaked, screaming and swearing and dry heaving and carrying on. Managed to keep the dog still for the x-ray though. We were all crying because we were laughing so hard, she would have done the same if we had been in her place. It was like laughing at a family member and not out of malice. Even she laughed about it later. Days later. I saw two stonemasons get in a fist fight when I worked construction. I was laying electrical underground pipe, and they were laying block wall. One threw a hammer at the other one and hit him in the head. Cracked his eye socket. Cops came and took our statements and the guy got arrested for assault. A guy once screamed to the whole office I was bullying him and he was reporting me to the citizens advice bureau. I got so many dirty looks, but it turned out he had stopped taking medication for his schizophrenia and voices had told him I was being nasty. We ended up being really good friends and had a great time working together. I'm glad this story ended well. That must have been awful for both of you. I was working as a lab assistant, under a woman who was pregnant, and in the stage where her sense of smell was like a superpower. One of the tests I had to do involved using pure acetic acid, very strong vinegar. She really couldn't handle the smell so much that she made me and thousands of dollars of lab equipment go outside to run this test while sitting on the concrete step 15 meters or so from the lab. You should have moved at a glacial pace. I was working at an online store that specialized in D&D Warhammer ETC related items. We were super backed up and working late on Christmas Eve, packing items to ship. The goal was to finish that night so we could all spend Christmas with our families. A few people were already on vacation, so it was myself, my good friend Jay and this kid who I will call Sam. Sam was pretty socially challenged, even for a group of Warhammer players, and was very much so into LARP. Well, I should say into Scar. Think of Ren Fares but more serious. I was pretty upset at Sam because he arbitrarily decided to leave early and leave us working past midnight. We were having a discussion about LARP, which was one of my hobbies, Werewolf, the Apocalypse represent, and I asked him about his LARP group. He got pretty heated and began to loudly inform me about how Scar was not LARPing. Maybe it was because I was frustrated at him making us work late, but I decided that this was a perfect time to troll. I wasn't the bully type, and I admit that I do feel bad about badgering him. Well you play fight with swords, right? As a character? With costumes? Why isn't that a LARP? And so on. Sam knocked over a folding chair and scurried out of the store. 
I got a pretty good laugh until this chubby 5 feet 5 inches neck bedded kid kicks open the door to the shop wearing a homemade armor bucket helmet, brandishing a wooden stick, not a up. Would you like to get hit in the face by this he yelled, walking furiously towards me with the stick raised above his head. With a stick I said, trying to keep my composure. It's a freaking long sword, he said, waving his stick around and knocking over some Warhammer boxes. The stick was then pointed right in my face. I raised my hands above my head, making claws, the werewolf LARP symbol for shifting into a werewolf, watch out, I'm turning I yelled, and then emitted a howl while laughing hysterically, the little bastard smacked me with his stick and Jay pulled me back right before I made a bad life decision, take your stick and go home, I yelled, it's a sword he yelled before walking out forever. This one was sad. I worked at a computer firm in the late 90s early 2000s. We had a female tech dispatcher who had recently had gastric bypass surgery, allowing her to once again fit into all of her 80s clothes again. We had a tech who was a good looking guy and flirted with all the ladies, but he was married with three small kids and he was an alcoholic. This poor woman had it so bad for this guy. One night, a bunch of us went out for drinks. The tech and the dispatcher got drunk and left together. Fast forward one week later and we find out that he hung himself. Fortunately, he lived, but he had suffered severe brain damage and was pretty messed up. Eventually his wife left him and the last I heard was that he was living with the other woman and she had taken over as his caregiver. Twisted crap right there. I was a manager years ago and one of my duties was to order office supplies for everyone. The receptionist decided that she wouldn't give me her list in time and so nothing was ordered for her. She finally decided days after deliveries that she needed 1000 envelopes even though she already had 5000 at her desk. There was a minimum order fee and her $7 box of envelopes didn't meet it. I told her that I'd add her envelopes to the next order, but she'd have to wait. She flipped her crap. She screamed through the corporate office about what and butthole I was and that I was trying to oppress her and get her fired by making it impossible for her to do her job. Fast forward to the following morning. I walked into my gated parking garage to see that my car was covered in eggs. There was puke all over my hood. And my windows had been written on with shoe polish. I washed everything off and went into work late. The receptionist was bragging about how she got me so good and how funny it was that she followed me home, waited for someone to open the access gate, and defaced my car. She was fired immediately. Worked at a college bookstore. We had been wearing polo shirts for our uniform but one day we got new button ups before we opened. The ladies weren't made to be tucked but the guys shirts were. I was the only guy working there at the time. I tucked mine in but I didn't realize the front of my shirt had gotten caught in my zipper. A new girl on the staff, based on nothing but seeing the front of my shirt in my zipper, decided I was sexually harassing her. I guess she thought I was trying to flash her or something, but I never said anything or made any physical gesture that could be construed as a sexual advance. She wrote a note detailing this affront to her dignity and took it to my boss, another woman, in her office. My boss knows me. And she knows it would be unwise for me to start sexually harassing a co-worker when all of my co-workers are women. She comes out and tells me my shirt is caught in my zipper. Mortified. I go to the bathroom to fix it and I think, outside of me being a bit embarrassed, that's the end of it. At this point I didn't know about the accusation of sexual harassment. The girl was very upset that her accusation wasn't taken more seriously. She went to the bathroom for about 2 hours. Luckily it was a slow day, and comes back and starts cussing out my boss, who proceeds to take her back in her office and talk, not understanding what the frustration was about at the time. I am very confused. New girl gets fired. As she leaves she grabs about 4 packages of really crappy pens and sprints out the door. My boss explained the situation to me after she left. My dad went an entire workday with his penis showing because he wears no underwear and his zipper was down. He didn't realize it until the end of the day, no one said anything. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video.
Bye for now.